The mole is a pretty ubiquitous concept in chemistry. We use it in an awful lot of the problems that we work with, and it really is a useful and helpful tool to help us understand things. Let's take a little bit of a look at how we can use the mole and what it is. A mole is really just a grouping unit. It's a way for us to count a large number of tiny things and express it in a way that doesn't seem like such a large number. Definitionally, one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pieces. And I say pieces here because this is the right relationship, whether we're talking about atoms or ions or molecules or soccer balls, it doesn't really matter. Um, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pieces is what we call one mole. Now, there really isn't a good abbreviation for mole. One thing that does get done fairly often, and I do it all the time, is we just drop the E and write mole, M-O-L. But the thing that we really have to be careful about and not do is do not use a small m as an abbreviation for moles. A small m is used for so very, very many things, and it just has the potential for being confusing. If you want to abbreviate mole, go with just the simple MOL. Okay, I call these grouping units. Grouping units are something that we're very accustomed to and we use all the time, but we don't think about using them all the time. A grouping unit is just anything that refers to a group of some other item. So the one that always gets brought up is, you know, a dozen is 12 items. So that one's pretty common, but we can also think about, you know, really what's a gallon? A gallon is a grouping unit. It's a group of 128 fluid ounces. Or a pound is 16 ounces. A yard is three feet. These are all grouping units. We can even extend it to other things. A side in football is 11 players. So we don't talk about 11 players. We talk about the side uh, in a football match. Or we can have a box of pens, and that's 12 pens. But this is actually a good one because it points out that not all grouping units are as rigidly and rigorously defined as, you know, a dozen is always 12. That's just accepted. But a box of pens might be 12, but it could be 6 or it could be 10 or 20. It really depends on the pen that you're, that you're counting. Grouping units can be pretty rigorously defined or they can be a little bit more loosely defined. So let's look at a grouping unit. You want to bake some bread. The recipe you have calls for 64 ounces of flour, but you go to the store and they don't sell flour by the ounce, they sell flour by the pound. How many pounds of flour do you need? Well, this is where we need one of these conversion factors, one of these relationships between a grouping unit and a smaller unit. So one pound, is 16 ounces of flour in this case. Now to set that up, the problem people sometimes get into is, is it multiply by 16 or divide by 16? And the way I like to approach those is set it up so that your units work. We know ounces from the problem. We want to divide ounces by ounces so those go away and we want to be left with pounds. So in this case, we better divide by 16 and the ounces unit goes away. We're left with pounds, and this is four pounds of flour. That's a pretty respectable size loaf of bread. So let's play another little game. Why do we use grouping units? I mean, I, I think you're getting a feel for that, but in you know, another way, let's think about that. So how many dots are shown below? Are you ready to count dots? All right, ready and go. All right, how many dots were there? Did, did you did you get them all? No. Why didn't you get them all? The problem there is there were an awful lot of dots and there wasn't a lot of time to count them. It became a little hard to count all the dots in the amount of time you're given. Let's see if we can help ourselves. Let's define a grouping unit. So we can define grouping units however we want. This grouping unit that I've chosen to define here is one unit is nine dots. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's my grouping unit. Let's see if that helps. How many dots are on the screen? Ready, go. Did you get it that time? 
Some of you might have, but that was still a little quick. Remember, grouping units are defined to make them useful in a given context. And I think that that grouping unit might have been a little small. So let's expand our grouping unit. Now, let's say that one unit is 20 dots. One, two, three, four by one, two, three, four, five. That's 20 dots in the green box. Okay, ready? Count. How many were there? More of you probably got it that time. So, you know, we can look back at that and we have one, two, three by one, two, three. That's nine units, nine grouping units. Each of them have 20 dots in. So nine times 20 is 180 dots on the screen. That is a little bit more practical reason and way that we can use grouping units. Now, the one thing that I really want you to remember is that moles are grouping units. That's all they are. They're nothing really more special than that. If you're doing regular grouping units, people usually can manage that without too much trouble. And sometimes when you move to moles, people try to make it so much harder than it is. But really, moles are just grouping units. So think about them that way and use them the same way. It just happens to be a really, really big number. Let's use our grouping unit to figure out the more chemistry sounding problem here. How many argon atoms are in 2.783 moles of argon? Again, we need our grouping unit relationship. One mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pieces. Let's set it up. We've got moles of argon, so that's what we're starting with. That means we want to get rid of moles in this relationship, so we must have to set it up that way so that moles cancel with moles. So I'm multiplying 2.783 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd to get 1.676 times 10 to the 24th. The unit I'm left with is argon atoms. Keep it simple. Don't make it harder than it has to be. Moles are grouping units. They're just ways of counting large numbers of atoms all at the same time. You'll get this. It's a pretty straightforward thing once you use it a little bit. Good luck and keep on practicing.